obviously a ton of excitement and anticipation surrounding aducanumab. So how are you feeling about the potential of this drug? Uh, I myself am feeling very encouraged. It's very frustrating as a clinical neurologist to uh, basically, you know, uh, give these diagnoses, which I give several times a week and not have more to add my fingertips to treat beyond what I've had to treat for the last 18 years. So that's exciting news, number one. The other exciting news is, of course, this is a transformative moment. We are now about to take the journey toward transforming Alzheimer's from a terminal disease, as we've known it, to a chronic disease, mm -hmm. much the way we did with diabetes. Uh, and this is important also because uh, I believe aducanumab if it's approved, is a first step in a multiple um, drug cocktail, multiple drugs to be approved in the next five years. Uh, I think we are, I think we are now where MS was when I graduated from medical school 29 years ago. I think we're going to finally start moving in that direction of being having meaningful changes in patient care. Do you feel as though that this has um, helped reinvigorate um, those who, who support and back the amyloid hypothesis? hypothesis? Yeah. Uh, I was an investigator for every single one of the monoclonals. I was one of the leading investigators for the fapanuzumab study. Mm -hmm. So the reason I'm saying this too is that for more than 15 years, mon uh, the amyloid hypothesis dominated Alzheimer's therapeutics. It has uh, been, and you know, the idea that amyloid clearance was a good idea. Uh, and, you know, you go through the SOLA, the BAPI, the GANT, the CREN, you name your, name your monoclonal, there's been a lot of them. Uh, and when we've seen sick failure after failure, people keep saying that removing amyloids doesn't work. And there's a logic to that. The fact is that amyloid doesn't correlate very well with clinical progression. We know that you can have a brain full of amyloid and the progression really doesn't correlate well. So people keep openly wondering, why are we still pursuing amyloid? But now we've shown consistently, reliably, with ADU and with BAN and with GANT, uh, uh, 241 and with GANT, that we can remove amyloid out of the brain very well, very robustly, very effectively. That's a huge step forward. The fact that we can remove target pathology out of the brain is a good thing. But now we're showing that there's probably a delay, nine to 12 months, before you start to see a clinical divergence of signal, which is suggests that removing an amyloid may not be the primary outcome. Uh, that removing amyloid makes the brain better and downstream effects, whether it's inflammation, other things, tau, could be benefiting from the removal of amyloid. So the, what I'm saying is that the amyloid hypothesis keeps being reviewed, keeps being reconsidered, and the people who say the amyloid hypothesis is wrong are are, I should say, myopic, and the people who say the amyloid hypothesis, and that's the only thing we should go through, are also myopic, and that removing amyloid might be a good thing, and we might be causing downstream benefits that we're now starting to realize. Uh, uh, so I think it's not just the amyloid hypothesis. We need to not be reductionist. We need to be thinking broadly, but uh, the fact that we can remove amyloid is a very exciting thing.